and uh, with the church and um, no, he's going to have it behind the organ. Okay. You're going to go behind the organ. You know how it's mm-hmm. like that. You're going to go right there, and then you're going to grab it, and then you're going to come out with okay. the birth certificate. Oh. And then I'll say what's happening. And by that point, Charlotte should already be there. Charlotte, uh, every, uh, Charlotte should be, the whole congregation should be inside her church right now. And then Charlotte will say some names and give them a gift. And okay. I'll be there. Okay? Okay. So your task is to not call me. Okay, so you're going to be the one. Oh, my God. Can okay. you help me? Welcome to Sligo Church. joining us live or you found us online. We thank you for being a part of our worship today. Here's the thing. I can't volunteer for VBS this year. I take care of my own kids all day. I'm already tithing. What else do they want from me? Kids just don't get me. I don't know anything about the Bible. I am not a juice and crackers man. My kids are already grown up. I can't sing. I can't carry a tune. I volunteered last decade. I need less stress in my life. I'm allergic to glitter. Kids are gross. I don't have enough vacation days. Let's be honest, you don't want me teaching your kids. Look, we've heard it all before, so cut the threads and sign up for BBS. I think God's calling me to the parking lot ministry. Good morning and happy Sabbath. I heard a lot of chuckles. Smiles are really good for singing. So let's all sing together, because there aren't a lot of us out here yet this morning. I want to hear you. Number 522 for our opening hymn, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. I dare not trust the sweetest spring. 
It's a VBS one. It's a VBS. From our house to your house and anywhere in between, welcome to Sligo Church Live. Online and mobile at SligoChurch.com. Good morning and welcome to Sligo Live. I'm Hazel Marroquin, and summer is in full effect all around the world. And nothing yells summer louder than Vacation Bible School. Vacation Bible School we know as VBS. And in the summer, we have an opportunity to bring in all the children for one whole week and find fun ways to engage them and teach them about Jesus. Well, today, and here at Sligo, we're one week away on the 17th, we begin our VBS, and today I'm very excited. We have a special guest with us today, which is this year's VBS leader, Risa. Welcome, Risa, and I see that you've brought a friend along. Yes, thank you for having me, and this is my friend, DJ Cupcake. Ah, <laughs> DJ Cupcake. <laughs> Risa, it has been a privilege <clears throat> and honor for me to personally watch you uh, grow up while I've been here at Sligo Church and you've been engaged in many different things. So I know a lot about you, but why don't you tell our church a little bit about yourself? Hi, happy Sabbath. My name is Risa J. Labrador and I've been attending Sligo Church ever since I was a toddler. I attended Sligo Adventist School and I was valedictorian at TA Prep and I'm going into my sophomore year at TA. And I love singing, I love playing music and I also love VBS. Now, Risa, thank you. I do have to mention something special. Uh, I've checked the records, and from everything that I find, you are our youngest VBS director here at Sligo Church ever. How do you feel about that? A little overwhelmed, because <laughs> I know that being the VBS director, you have to have a lot of responsibilities, and it's usually someone who is much older and has a lot of experience. But I would like to thank you, Pastor Hazel, for giving me the opportunity and for all the volunteers who helped and support me. Risa, uh, we've seen you. Uh, uh, we, we sometimes see you uh, singing up front, playing your violin, and a lot of different things. And so uh, um, God is calling young people to be yes. leaders. Get us excited. Let us see what we, yes. here at Sligo, we believe so much. And, and, and training you to be leaders because what, you are the leader this year. Yes. And we've been meeting uh, these last few weeks, working together. Uh, there's a lot that's been happening, as you've seen, that yes. happens behind the scenes. Uh, but your youthful mind, your energy, has brought so much more to this year's Vacation Bible School. So thank you. <clears throat> now, in the past, you have been a participant of VBS. So this year you get to lead out. And something I noticed immediately is when you became VBS leader, when we opened up for uh, volunteers to sign up, we have a lot of teenagers that have signed up. Yes. Okay, a lot of your friends have yeah. been joining. We're excited. Tomorrow is our training. Don't forget, uh, volunteers. Tell us how many volunteers we have so far and how many children we have registered. We have... <clears throat> 76 volunteers that are signed up and 99 participants. Woohoo! Amen to that. We just need one more to reach 100. And this morning I saw you registering children in the atrium. We'll be there again after church. Or where else can they find us? Sligochurch.org. Yes. And VBS. VBS. Register for children and volunteers. Yes. Now, uh, tell us what you want the kids to walk away with for VBS, something that you personally experienced. Um, I would like the kids to experience making friends as I did when I was younger in VBS. I attended other churches for VBS, so in one summer I attended three VBS at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it really much. I love the games, I love the crafts, and I want the children to have that experience too. I also want them to be a good listener, to follow directions, to also be cooperative, and most importantly, learn, the, learn Bible stories about Jesus and learning together. That sounds like a great uh, plan and goal there, <clears throat> and clearly it helped you also be a, a better student, we can say. Yes. So VBS does a lot, right? Not yes. only helps our children learn about Jesus, 
but also to be better students. Awesome. So uh, lastly, we do want to talk a little bit. We want to thank everyone. We've been yes. receiving donations, yes. monetary, uh, supplies, uh, thank our volunteers, but we still need a few things, right? Yes, we need 50 of these paper towel rolls or, or toilet, paper. toilet paper rolls for our babies downstairs. So if you have any, don't throw them away. You can give it to us at the office yes. next door. Yes, and show the kids uh, what they will be receiving. All of them will receive the lanyard. You lanyard. guys will be getting this at the end of the week. You able to keep this. This is our cute um, mascot, DJ Cupcake, and with our verse, Matthew six eleven, give us this day our daily bread. And they get to keep one of the bags too, right? We have some nice, colorful bags. DJ Cupcake, uh, is there anything you'd like to say today? No, he'll no. wait till next week. <laughs> Risa, thank you so much. Hey, Risa, thank you for being with us today. We are excited. Uh, thank you to our volunteers, for our supporters. Please uh, join us in prayer. We want a successful Vacation Bible School. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And now we transition back to the sanctuary where Pastor Barrientos will share a message with us today. And it is entitled, We Will Make It. God bless you. And if there's anything we can do to assist you, please send us a message at sligochurch.org. Bye-bye. Morning, church family. Happy Sabbath. Thank you for joining us, whether you're online or here in the sanctuary. It's good to see your sunny faces on this rainy day, and just thankful that you are here. In their book, uh, Timothy Lane and Paul Tripp, uh, called How People Change, they point us to Revelation 7, and they draw our attention to the multitude that's standing around the throne in Revelation 7. And this is a future picture, but if you can imagine yourself there, it means that you have made it through whatever you face here. And so this is what I thought of as I saw the sermon and thought of the title today, which is, We Will Make It. So know that you will make it. See yourself in that future vision of, of us standing around the throne. You will make it through whatever it is that you are facing. just want to make you aware of a couple of things happening at Sligo. The first is VBS, as we just saw on the uh, screen there with Sligo Live. So if you are um, interested, then we hope that you will join us. We have about 100 people signed up so far, and we know that number could just keep growing, so the more the merrier. So if you want to come and be part of VBS, then, then please come and join us. There's also even a, um, we're still looking for some uh, food donations for the volunteers so that we can, you know, feed people that are helping us throughout the week. And we are also uh, looking for volunteers. So if you're interested in being a participant, if you're interested in being a volunteer, or if you're interested in donating food, you can find all of that information on sligochurch.org. Also, to make you aware of a youth game night that is happening on July 23rd at 7 p.m. So we'll start with some food at 7, we'll do a worship at 8, and then the games will begin at 8.30. We're also partnering with other local Potomac Conference churches. Um, so it'll be a good time to just get together with, with youth. So if you're in high school, then we hope that you'll come and join us that night for some food, for some worship, and for some, some games. That'll be from 7 to 10.30. Sligo by the Sea is going on throughout the summer. So if you want to take a vacation out to Ocean City and um, you still want to be you know, a part of Sligo, then you can join us at Sligo. But by the sea. So um, Sabbath school begins at 10 a.m., worship begins at 11 a.m., and you can also find that information on sligochurch.org as well. And of course, we have prayer gathering every Wednesday at 7 p.m., so we hope that you will join us there as well. 
We want to keep in mind the uh, family of um, Reggie Chavez. We want to keep in mind uh, just prayer for healing and comfort for the Chavez and Browning families as they are grieving at this time. And so just, you know, add them to your prayers as you, in your daily prayers. And at this time, let's go ahead and open up our service with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you are in this space right now, that your spirit is here with us. And I pray that we will be drawn closer to you, that we will see that we will make it through our trials of life. We thank you. We love you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. There are more out there now. As we transition into worship this morning, let's stand together and sing hymn number 246, Worthy, Worthy is the Lamb. Let us kneel as we seek the Lord's presence in prayer. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Glory in his holy name. 
Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Let us seek the Lord and his strength and seek his presence continually. Remember the wondrous works that he has done. Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Now search us, O God, and know our hearts. Test us and know our anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in us, and please forgive us, Lord, and lead us in the way everlasting. This morning we remember the family of Reggie Chavez. Bring them comfort as they grieve the loss of their loved one. We ask that you be with the Browning family. Bring them healing and strength. May these feel it, families feel your loving arms wrapped around them. We remember those who are in need of employment. Bless them, Lord, and give them the means to provide for their families. There are many unspoken requests. The requests of parents that they have for their children and their futures. The requests for not only physical healing, but spiritual healing as well, Lord. There is so much unrest in the world. Shootings, the lack of respect for life, turmoil everywhere. Please be near us, Father. Calm our fears and grant us the desires of our hearts. Let us feel your awesome presence. Open our eyes and hearts to those in need. Create a longing in us to become the hands and feet of Jesus. Where there is a need, give us the means to fill us. Teach us to do your will. May our desire be to become a reflection of you. As we prepare for Vacation Bible School, be with the leaders and the many volunteers throughout the week. We ask for an extra measure of the Holy Spirit that an opportunity is not missed to show Jesus to the community. Touch each little heart and may the seeds be sown for the desire to learn more of you. We pray for Pastor Alex. Anoint him with the power of the Holy Spirit as he imparts to us the message you have placed on his heart. Open our ears, our hearts, and our minds to receive the blessings you are so eager to pour out. We are grateful to be a part of this Sligo community and to be able to come to your house to worship together. We thank you for bringing us through another week. You have blessed us with the gift of your son, and you have blessed us with the gift of eternal life. We are not worthy, but only by your grace. Thank you. Lord, you once said that it is to your glory that we should bear much fruit. That is the desire of our hearts, to long for you, to know you, and to be filled by you, to be used by you for your glory and the lives of those around us who so desperately need to know you. You have heard our petitions. Lord, be merciful and grant them. This is what we ask in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Morning, children. Now is your time to come up for the children's message. And as you look around, you'll see people handing you some dollar bills or coins maybe. Bring those up and place them in the basket, okay?
Awesome. Thank you so much. Good morning. How are you? I have a question for you this morning. Um, there was a child that was born, and there's power in the name of that child. And I'm going to read something to you that way before this child was born was already being said. And let me see if you can guess the name of this child, okay? So I'm going to read it, and it says, A child has been born for us. We have been given a son who will be our ruler. His, his name will be Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God, Eternal God, and Prince of Peace. That was one of the prophets that said that. Can anybody tell me who he was talking about? Jesus. Say it loud. Jesus. Jesus. How many of you know the, and recognize the name of Jesus? Awesome. Do you think there's power in the name of Jesus? How many of you believe there's power in the name of Jesus? Wow, hopefully after VBS, all of your hands will go up, okay? <laughs> so, you'll hear in today's message by Pastor Barrientos, okay, more about the power in the name of Jesus. Now, I have one more question for you, okay? Can anybody tell me what's the song that's most sung all around the world? It's not necessarily a church song. Can anybody tell me? Can anybody, it's okay if you don't know it, because I'm going to tell you what it is today. Does, it, can, does anybody want to just, just take a guess? It's the song. It's not necessarily a church song. It's just a song that we sing the most throughout the year. Hip-hop. Which one? Hip-hop. K-pop? No, is that what you said? Hip-hop. And, and? I don't know that one. I need to learn that one. Uh, you know it? Oh, oh, you know what it is? I'm going to say the birthday song. Uh, who agrees with him? Oh, okay. So it is actually the happy birthday song. I'm going to call Miss Charlotte. Do y'all know who Miss Charlotte is? Let's call Miss Charlotte up here. Miss Charlotte, can you come up here? And Risa's going to show us something too. Risa? Uh, okay, Miss Charlotte's going to come up here. She has something to say to us today. I don't know whether I can talk to the children or I can talk to the congregation. How about if you do both? I'm going to try to do both. And you know what? When I look in the bulletin, something is missing in here. And if you look in it, you're not going to see it. And so we just had to put it in. Okay. That's we right. just had to put it in. And it's a happy birthday song to our pastor, Alex. DJ Cupcake left the gift for you, so everybody gets a cupcake on their way out, and if you want, you can share with mom and dad, okay? You make sure you get yours first, but we have one for everybody on your way out, okay? So, yes. One. Why is there one candle? There's too many to put on there, and we can't have the police station, fire station come out. So remember, there's power in the name of who? Jesus, and we love birthdays here too, right? So happy birthday, Pastor Alex. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much that you're with us, you're with our children, and we know and believe with all our hearts that there's power in your name. 
Continue to bless our church family. Continue to bless our children in a special way. And may we always remember that you're with us always. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye-bye. The scripture reading is in Psalms chapter 9, verses 9 to 18. The Lord is a stronghold for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And those who know your name put trust in you. For you, O Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you. Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare his deeds amongst the people. For he who avenges blood is mindful of them. He does not forget the cry of the afflicted. Be gracious to me, O Lord. See what I suffer from those who hate me. You are the one who lifts me up from the gates of death, so I may re recount all your praises. And in the gate of, the, of daughter Zion, rejoice in the, your deliverance. The nations have sunk in the pit that they have made. In the net that they hid has their own foot been caught. The Lord has made himself known. He has executed judgment. The wicked are snared in the work of their own hands. The wicked shall depart to Sheol. All the nations that forgot God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor perish forever.
Good morning, Sligo. Happy Sabbath to every single one of you. Praise God for Naomi's song. And I was going to stand up, but then I thought you'd look at me crazy. And um, I was going to do it anyway, but I was going to get up so it would contradict what I'm doing. God be praised if it wasn't for his grace. If it wasn't for grace. This morning, we are so thankful that you have joined us this morning for good things. God will speak through the scriptures, and the Lord himself will be able to do good things for us this morning. And we ask that you keep us in prayer as the Spirit works this morning. What do you say? Amen. And this morning, before I pray, we're going to invite uh, the youth with Pastor Gant to come on up. If you are here, they will be doing a small missionary project in South Carolina, and we'd like to pray for them as they go. If anyone is here at the moment who will be accompanying Pastor Gant to the missionary trip, we're gonna pray for you this morning. We'll get it going. No one's here, Pastor Gant? They're hiding. We're gonna pray for you, for your family, and for the work that you're gonna be doing with our youth. Is that all right? Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the work that you have in store for our youth in their trip. We ask that you protect them, that everything that they front and are introduced to, may it be for your spirit's ability to be empowered, to heal, also to minister to hearts who are needing more about you. We thank you for this opportunity. May it be life-changing. May they come back afresh, re being able to see what you have done in their lives. Thank you for them. We ask that you use them as lights. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Amen. So we will be praying for our youth and their missionary trip. I also have a very special announcement this morning. You know that our pastoral team for the past couple of months have just been going over just how we're going to move forward with filling up of the openings we have with our pastoral role. After conversations with our board, conversations with our pastors, with our staff, conversations even with the councils that minister locally, um, we will be moving on with some roles that will be changing within the Sligo Church. And I ask that you keep us in prayer as we move forward. These changes will take into effect in the coming month of August, August 1 really. Who you know as your pastoral care, congregational care pastor, Pranitha Fielder, will be moving into the administrative pastoral role here at Sligo beginning of August. That is the first role that we'll be switching up. The second role that we'll be switching up, the pastor who you know as your children's pastor who is up here, Pastor Hazel, whom we all love, will be extending her blessing, the gemness that she is, into the rest of the church as becoming our new congregational and family pastor in also the beginning of August. That is to say, what happened to the children's pastor position? Well, we also have just welcomed into the team Nashoni Chang, who will be joining us in two weeks here where you will be able to meet her in person. You will be able to see her doing VBS. She will be our children's pastor moving forward, leaving us with one more pastoral role to work with so that our team is positioned to do God's work here and our extended ministries outside of Sligo. So from my heart, I would like you to continue to pray for us as we move forward and have a team in which it can direct ourselves to doing God's work here and now. So keep us in prayer. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for what you will do. We thank you for your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mom and I had gotten into the bus headed to our local church. It was a late evening, but we were headed to a concert. I was excited. I had my vest on, ready to go. 
I'm not sure why I was part of the choir, because, well, I didn't think I could sing, but I was part of it. And we were heading towards church. We got off the bus, and we noticed that there were blue and red lights outside of the church. The church, it seemed, was in a chaos. There were brothers and sisters whom I know by name, leaders, strong, who demonstrated a good possibility of leading a good church in what we were doing. My church at the time was what I thought to be a thriving church. Some changes had occurred locally in which the local church did not necessarily like. And what tended to happen during that time was that you start realizing that policemen who were there to, instead of securing us, making sure we were okay, actually, there were some brothers, some sisters who were being held back from each other by policemen. What was going on? My mom said, I don't know what's going on here, but we should go back home. Brothers and sisters had turned against one another. And what ends up happening the next week when we arrived at church, we found out what had happened. A church that had been thriving with 300 members and more, possibly a lot more, was now down to 36 members in the local church. How do you have a quote-unquote thriving church till about 36? What does that happen? And we noticed that there was a new pastor in town, and as he began his sermon, he could not begin it without tearing up, choking up, and confessing a lot of the pain that he had gone through this past week. Rather than a congregation welcoming a new pastor, it was one in which people felt like this was not going to go anywhere. And I asked my mom, who was next to me, I said, Mom, what happened to our church? The majority was gone. And she said, well, this is what happens when Jesus is not at the center. And secondly, she said, she tapped me on my knee. She says, no te preocupes, don't worry. La iglesia le pertenece a Jesús. The church belongs to Jesus. Why do I give you this story? Well, this was my introduction to church. This is what would mold who I am. That faith began with chaos, and faith began with tragedy. The thing is, faith will welcome a lot of these chaotic moments in which it chooses to keep Christ at the full center or not. And one of the things that impressed me that evening, till this day, is my mom's sure gain. The church belongs to Jesus. And I will tell you this one thing. Notice what she did not say, the denomination. She said, the church, those in Christ. And what was interesting here is that everything that would come about in the future would be about how does faith make sense when episodes like this occur, not only within the church, but outside of it too. Here at Sligo, for the past couple months, we have been talking about things that relate to making healthy relationships, things that relates that postures us to be able to be a true community with being honest, being genuine, seeking the best welfare for those around us, and ultimately serving the kingdom that Christ has taught us that this is what you ought to teach those around us in light of the command that he's given to us. But what about the component of healing in the midst of that? If you notice, everything about us is about polarities, it's about issues, it's about problems, and it is during this time where even those who are in Christ are suddenly saying, I definitely love Jesus, I really dislike the church. And so what people are starting to say is, the church has hurt me, I still love Jesus. And so what happens is, there is this language that pervades us early on, that the church, in a sense, too, can be a harmful place, that we are not 
immune from it. And one of the things about the gospel that can help orient health is to see that we should and can begin with the beginning of Christ. Why? What has happened when Christ is no longer the center or the content of the church, we start thinking about everything else, leaving Christ as a substitute, leaving Christ as an option, leaving Christ as only for emergency basis. But Sligo, this morning I'd like to tell you, what if we went back to the scriptures where we notice that the gospel isn't about competing towards finding ourselves for salvation, but that we see that the Christ who's arrived for the church is one who is there to heal not only the people, but also the communities around them. When we do so, we resituate a lot of the context and what the gospel actually does. Luke's gospel begins with the Spirit's creational power and presence. The Spirit's presence is not only there to tell us that there was a beginning, but that every beginning as found in Jesus has the Spirit's presence. The beginning of the Gospel of Luke is empowered by the Spirit's presence granting birth to the Messiah. And if we grow up in him, we would have grace and truth. The second volume to the Gospel of Luke, the book of Acts, begins with the Spirit's power and presence. And even as the apostles witness his ascension, his going up to heaven, they are promised the Spirit's power. Even with the disappointing leaving of Christ's bodily presence, the beginning would incorporate the name of Jesus being proclaimed to all the regions with the Spirit's presence. The book of Acts is empowered by the Spirit's presence, granting birth to the resurrected Messiah's people so that they grow up in grace and in truth. Therefore, if Luke begins with the Spirit's presence and this power to heal through Jesus, we should expect the book of Acts to do something very similar. Whether this is a literary function, whether this is just an idea, I like for us to remember that healing begins with the interaction between the Spirit and Jesus. In other words, God's presence always creates something new, something of a beginning, something that heals. And perhaps by saying this, I am right reminding us that the God we worship remains active, alive, and afresh. And perhaps this is what mom was talking about, that the reason why we can begin and believe that Christ must remain the center of the church it's not that because Jesus was historically with us. It is because Jesus is actively in the church. What happens in chaotic moments where the church thinks to do other things about power, about leadership, about emotional responses to the gospel as a whole, as it relates to people, Christ remains the center primarily because he is right there then and then with the 36 people we had that day. Acts chapter 3 begins like this. It begins with a story. One day Peter and John were growing, going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. A man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the beautiful gate so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Verse 4, Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of who? Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Stand up and walk. 
And he took him by the right hand and he raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Verse 8, jumping up, he stood and he began to walk. And he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God. And they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement of what had happened to him. The gate of the temple becomes the entrance to a new future. Peter and John have entered that future, and now in that future, they are working, performing in it. The gate of the temple is the place of the repetition of pain. It is also the site of suffering. It is the space where inexplicable hurt meets fruitful witness. At the doorway, however, to worship are those whose very presence should discipline praise and guide hope. Before praises go up to God, listen to me, the poor and the lame, the sick and the pain must be seen. Careful that we think worship is all about us. But really, if Jesus is at the center, before you worship, you see who's the pain. The beginning of this ministry, after the Spirit had been given to the followers of Jesus, people will be seen fully, strongly, clearly, all equally important. And Peter speaks this way of gazing. The gaze invites fresh anticipation, that anticipation that God will move, that God will speak. And notice that the offering was not silver and gold because silver and gold are the gifts of Caesars. Here, Peter and John will give gifts of God, which includes healing. The provocation for me, at least in this chapter, is telling a little bit. Number one, after the healing takes place, people remain in wandering questioning how life can be imagined this way. Can healing be a way of life? Can this be a true witness to what God does in the world? And my second observation is this, that there is always resistance to healing, as we will see in the next part of the chapter. Everyone's excited that someone's being healed, and as soon as they get into this conversation, there are two more episodes that occur right after. They are confronted by those who crucified the Lord, and then the second group, the elite, the religious group, the ones who say, no, you can't really do this, right? Because healing has this component of always making sure that it is resisted. Because we have thought that theology is about making sure that we have doctrinal statements very clear and that the sort of doctrinal statements verify, identify what we believe. And yet, when the gospel begins in the gospel of Luke and then its second volume, it is not doctrinal statements that make you who you are. It is not the clause that makes you who you are. It is not the paragraph that makes you who you are. It is the name of Jesus Christ who lifts you up and makes you see the great power of God. But we don't talk that way because it's too Pentecostal. Oh, careful with the movement. Because healing is resisted. No, 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 no. no we don't do that. You, you can't have miracles because that's, that's, that's weird. You need to be rational, confessional before you have activity, because we've been taught that right theology is to be spelled out before you actually practice it. Ladies and gentlemen, the church is built on the practice that God has moved towards his people to do great things amongst them, so that when they testify, they don't testify about a paragraph, they testify about the work of God. Well, what do you believe in? Well, you know, I believe in 
da 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 the literal da 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 well I believe that da 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 and the first day da 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 no 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 what do you believe in I believe in the one who's come to us by whose name you and I are healed that is how the gospel begins Rather than, well, first I'm justified, then I'm sanctified, then I'm glorified, because there are steps to going up to God. No? So, first, you accept this one belief. Once you have this one belief, you have a second belief. Once you're done with the third, you go to the fourth one. Once you're done with the fifth one, I've arrived, God. The gospel is an interruption to how life is being viewed Because all those who thought they were saying something about God, so focused on what is correct about God, forgot to see God where God was working. God was not working in the temple. He was working right outside of it with the lame, with the blind, with those who've been shunned, with those who are pained. And yet, this is a problem. But Lord, you taught us that the scriptures are important. Yes, one thing is to read scripture, another is to see it. All right, Bible 101. The point of Bible reading isn't so that we read it and just memorize it. The thing about scripture is you read it and then go and see where God is working. So rather than being students, you become observers. Rather than being recipients, you become witnesses. Because the gospel begins with healing. No wonder we have become so polarized and competitive with what is right belief. No wonder somebody, well, you don't need theology. It doesn't matter. Just need Jesus. Yeah, Yeah, that's because you've seen it develop in a very weird way lately. Theology today is all over the news, but it's seldom theology because it does not give life. Everything about what we find in the Spirit doing in the work of the people of God is to give them life. Not just to say, oh, well, you don't know, have nothing to say. Oh, yeah, you do. It was my mom hitting me on the knee saying, we will make it. And it changes the way we think about the gospel and how it responds to it. Notice what's amazing is that healing is for the common people. It's weird to see that the religious elite believing that salvation only rests on the educated, the doctrinally informed, and only those who among who are supposedly okay with their own spiritual lives. Notice, even in this chapter as a whole, as Peter and John addresses these different groups, speaking holy words has serious consequences. The holy words that bring consequences, a word tied to the concrete liberating act of God for broken people. The disciples are among common people proclaiming liberation and that violence and death are no longer the ultimate power. It's interesting. Peter and John would be labeled two things. The first one would be they are heretics. One, because they believe that Jesus is the power of God. The second problem that they have is that they are now in sedition. Why? Because Jesus is the power. The law, the prophets, the wisdom texts were pointing to a moment in which God would act to redeem his people. Not escaping the world, not even being morally upright, but the healing that would be brought to broken people. What if when we speak of the gospel extending itself towards people, we spoke of it in healing terms? Maybe we would get off of our machismo. Maybe we'd stop trying to see what God is doing in the world. I saw a post somewhere. One of my colleagues in this conference was being installed just in this area. The female pastor being installed. The picture was a resemblance of pastors, elders of the local church seeing that this person will be used for the glory of God in their ministry. 
And you notice how many comments were put down underneath in that one page? Usually, they were all men. Men making comments, how could it be? Because the Bible doesn't say this, the Bible doesn't say that. In the Bible this, in the Bible that. You will go to hell because of this and that. I'm saying, interestingly, even if this was the case, which is poorly argued, even if this is the case, what about your thinking and commentary like this actually produces what the gospel does? Hey, even if you were against the rationale, the logic behind, well, I disagree with you. Well, in your disagreement, how are you healing me? You get, you get what I'm saying? Because one thing is to say, I disagree. Well, I can't wait for you to burn. Uh, that's weird. And I wonder here how the gospel then trickles throughout the stories of the gospels where healing is a huge factor of the witness of what God is doing through the Spirit. That the gospel is now encapsulating itself, empowering these poor apostles, these incapable people who put their trust in Christ and are doing amazing things, not because they have their doctrinal things all together, but because they are talking now in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. What if we spoke more about the Jesus of Nazareth and the name of Jesus of Nazareth? How much would that steer us towards healing? Now, why talk about this? Because I was there and I was impacted seeing this pastor cry being in many ways hurt by the people that he was supposed to flock in many ways and shepherd for them. He was now beginning ministry, and as I look back, and I consider his face when I was a young kid. Do I even need to go into that type of space where I have to be flacked all the time in order to please someone's anxiety about themselves? The reality is that if Christ remains the center, not only of the church, but the center of who we are, and the way we speak, the way we walk, that the way we minister, that the way we reach out to people has its end goal of giving them what Christ has given to you, which is Christ and who is now healing you. Changes the ball game. It's fascinating. Years ahead, we come down now to this conversation of what happens with mom in a very serious way. Mom, what happened that day? Tell me. What was the motive? She told me what it was. Lots of different other stories, of course, so forth. But she says one thing. She says, but you see, it's interesting. It's like, what happens when Christ is not taken seriously as the healer? I think she was right. And I go back to that time where she's saying, we will make it. You know why? We will only be able to make it because we belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. When we belong to the Lord, when it is truly in his plate to be allowed to be molded, to be formed, to be graced, to be empowered, to give gospel work, healing take place around us. And that is significant, primarily because we continue to be in the same sort of situation. What does the world need? What do we need? <laughs> the name of Jesus of Nazareth, the one who's called us from our brokenness, who's given us life abundant, who's given us capacity and empowerment to do his work right here right now it changes in a significant way because as I start to realize now my daughter who's at two and a half you look at this child 
And I start realizing, what does my home need for me to be able to teach her early, early on that in the name of Jesus, healing can take place? And that as she's being formed, as she grows in my sphere of influence, that she is able to trust what my mama told me. <laughs> We're going to make it. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. Sligo, this morning, may the Spirit be able to change our outcomes. May it change our community. May it change the way we treat one another interactively. May the Spirit teach us the language of healing. May the Spirit teach us that is not only what's to come, it is what is reality right in front of us now. We are needing it. So what ends up happening with this core group, Peter, John, goes up with this group together and provides all things in commonality. Notice. When you heal people, they come together. At the end of the chapter, they come together as one. And it said, not one of them had a lack of anything. Notice, when healing is part of the gospel work that we have, then the need seems to slim down. And rather than saying, oh, we don't have this, how about we begin ministry today in saying, ah, we have one another. And let us help each other be one, that by being one, we can demonstrate the oneness of God. And by doing so, the healing is there for the nations. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for your faithfulness. Thank you so much for your trust. Thank you so much for the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, there is healing. And in the name of Jesus, there is a call to move forward, to participate in the kingdom's work. We thank you that in the name of Jesus, we can actually do it without shame, without apology. And in the name of Jesus, that you will help us heal those around us. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. As parents, we share with our children, right? And then sometimes, I know with my own, Liam, he doesn't necessarily want to then share with Logan, and so I remind him that he has what he has because I've shared with him. And so in the same way, God has shared with us. He's given 100% of what we have to us, and so then it's on us now to share with us, share with others, and that's what tithe and offering is, is this time to share with others as we have been shared with so that the physical and spiritual needs of others can be met. And so I invite you at this time to consider how God has shared with you and how you can share with others. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for blessing us with the things that we have and help us then to be a blessing to others. And as there are those in our midst who are struggling, I pray that they would have a taste of who you are and your generosity through the generosity of others. Bless this, that it would be multiplied and that you would be lifted up and that others would be drawn to you and that we ourselves would continue to be drawn as well. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen.
as we go to serve, let's stand and sing together in number 294. There is power in the blood, and I want to hear it if you believe there is power in the blood. Amen. There's uh, probably tickling you a little bit. But what happened to your church then? I grew up in its progression after that. And it was as a child that I witnessed that weird event. But it was in that place where God also was training me to minister to people. And I'm thankful for it because I got the reality of what the church is. The church is feeble. Don't get hurt by that. The church is delicate. But because it belongs to Jesus, even in the midst of tragedy, disorder, chaos, From being a witness to it, he made me a witness to what God can do. And this morning, this one's for you. You have probably stopped believing in the name of the Lord. Just whatever you've been going through has been so heavy for you. And you just don't believe that in the name of Jesus Christ, it is possible to heal. 
afraid to even say it because you, you, you don't know what that would mean for you. But I would like to tell you this morning, it's okay to claim what is ours. Our inheritance is the Lord. And there's nothing wrong with praying together in the name of Jesus. May this happen today. Because the moment that you put yourself in the Lord's hand, you then become a witness to healing. And if not a witness, then you become a conveyor of it. This morning, can you be that? Can you allow the Lord to work in and through you? Well, Pastor, I, I, I'm still hurt. God works with hurt people. I invite you to pray with me that we invite the name of the Lord this morning. Father, we are feeble. We almost have no idea what we're doing in faith. Really, in many ways, we don't know what we mean when we talk about you, really, just to think that you're some powerful thing in the sky that helps us to get by every day on survival mode all the time. Lord, we've learned these past couple of weeks that in Jesus, we have life abundant now. And even with the noise around us, even with the noise here, even with the noise within us, you are readying us to do great things right here, right now. And some of us possibly are afraid to even invoke your name. But Lord, you did it in the past. We ask that you do it now. Teach us to proclaim, to ask that in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, the one who's been raised from the dead, empower us to heal. And that in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, that he also heals us in the process. We are tired of not being used by you. May we be willing and committed to say, yes, this is the moment where things start to heal. We ask for your guidance. We ask for your rich blessing. We will make it because all of this belongs to you. Thank you for Jesus. We are redeemed because of him. Thank you for Jesus because we have things to look forward to. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen.